Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Eternal Card Breakdown. We have a new promo card for the month. I was wondering when uh, one was going to launch for Dark Frontier, and uh, we did, in fact, get one. We got a full lore update with it, which was actually pretty extensive and also, like, very, very good. Thank you for the raid, by the way, Matty Ogre. Uh, we are... Uh, so we're going to be reviewing the card and talking a little bit about it. This is Jishu, the Burning Brush. She is an Oni poet. Uh, the lore for her is excellent, like... Uh, like overall this card seems like really really cool it's talking about basically oni from an alternate version of the shadowlands and uh, or an alternate version of miria from basically like uh, the other side of the shadowlands and an Arjunbord person sort of found their way there it's a really cool story i definitely recommend going and checking it out because the writing on it is just like yeah it's great it's like a plus writing uh, there's a lot of it and like it covers a lot of really interesting stuff about oni and oni society which is a part of eternal lore that we really haven't explored before so i'm really interested to hear like more stuff about them and like i'm glad that we got like a really good like awesome lore update about that card also the art is very good which uh, uh should come as no surprise like this is just like a really lovely hand-painted artwork uh there's some other art ar around this style this looks like the same artist who did um Svetcha and a couple of the other like really really good promos like uh also i think the new Svetcha was done with the same art style so like yeah this is a really really pretty style it works really well with eternal and like it's it's just like the lighting is gorgeous the like whole like hand-painted feel of it is gorgeous everything about it is just like really really pretty card so let's talk about the card itself uh this is a two cost two two that says when you play another oni play a plus one strength weapon with overwhelm on it and perhaps more importantly onslaught you may move a weapon of your choice to the top of your deck so it is an Oni, and it's an Oni that can be played in multiple colors because it is not high on influence. You can play it in Rakano very easily, but you can also play it in three color pairings, which is important if you want to do Ixtune weapons or if you want to do some interesting stuff with Stone Scar or Praxis stuff or like a little bit of Stone Scar or Praxis splash. Generally, this card, I think, will belong pretty strongly in Rakano pairings, mostly because one of the, th the three things that Jishu needs to be successful are cheap one drops, Onis, and and some sort of extra benefit from weapons and all three of those are most accessible in fire and justice specifically you've got three one drop onis in oni samurai oni ronin and oni patrol and you also have the ability to play a bunch of weapons get some weapon stuff matters out of cards like caleb's sanctum or ejen's workshop uh but like Finally, like the this is also where all of the relic weapons exist and all of the other like really, really big scary weapons exist. Like this card is pretty strongly in Rakano, although there are some interesting things that you can do with it in other color pairings, and that might be something that we'll explore later on. One thing that I think will be pretty interesting with this card is it might play very well in Stone Scar tokens if you want to basically have a two drop that immediately allows you to grab a Bloodright Callus for a Grenadin deck, then like that's something that you can use Jishu for that isn't Oni focused, but allows you to basically use the card as a tutor effect and that tutor effect is particularly strong when it comes to like actually playing the card at so in terms of what this card can accomplish it is an aggressive tutor effect and that i think is where the primary strength of it lies it does make all of your other oni like become a lot better and also are become more capable of actually like pushing through and doing damage it even synergizes with a couple of oni such as oni quartermaster which as soon as you play will get a plus one weapon with overwhelm on it and and then immediately draw a new card, thus replacing itself. Uh, there are a couple of Oni that have some synergies like this, like Shingani Firebrand, but a lot of them are also kind of anti-synergies. Like, it's not really very good to play a Ruckus Rouser, get two power, and then do maybe something with that. And it's not really great to do the same thing with Shingani Firebrand, deal two damage. That's kind of okay, but it's not like, uh, it's not going to be amazing. I think it's even one damage at that point. So, like, and then, like, there's also some other forecast Onis. There's one that actually doubles up weapons, uh, playing two plus one weapons doubling up there like there's actually anti-synergy with a lot of the higher end onis which is fine because in general this card does require a lot of early drops to really function well so if you want to use it as a tutor effect in like a more defensive deck you're probably happier playing rise to the challenge or the new chemo card that basically like pulls weapons from your deck and gives them plus one plus one bonuses so like this is a reasonable two drop but really only in the aggro format i would say that it's not very much a control card it 
kind of fits in the mid-range a little bit. If you want to do some mid-range Onis, there's some possibilities there with the um, the Kyojin Grand or Kyoju Grand Shogun and a couple of other options along those lines. But like for the most part, my impression of this card is that it really needs at least 12 one drops to function. And if you don't have those, then like it's less likely to actually get the power that you want uh, because the plus one weapon with overwhelm ability, eh, it's okay. Uh, does synergize very well with Caleb's Sanctum, so that gives us a little bit more to do with that sort of red relic and have a little bit more fun with that card. And like overall, like it is also capable of basically pulling some very, very interesting stuff. Uh, the obvious picks for weapons as far as things go, you've got Shogun's Scepter, which is a really easy three drop follow-up that will probably belong in pretty much any Jishu the Burning Brush deck. Uh, if you get Shogun's Scepter, Jishu becomes a 4-3 with a Warcry, and also plays a 3-1 Overwhelm Warcry Oni, which, yeah, that's decent value and pretty good on the aggressive front. Uh, then you can pull cards like Caleb's Persuader, which of course is a very, very powerful red weapon that functions as a mini Deep Forge Plate. Good tempo stuff, really effective. You can of course pull Deep Forge Plate and do some pretty great things there. And then once you're like into the sixes and sevens, there's silly stuff to grab. You can start doing things like Roland's Fists and other nonsense, but you're probably not looking at any like major weapons to play on units at that point, and are probably instead looking towards relic weapons like Star Steel Die Show, uh, Sword of the Sky King, anything like that you want to play that's specifically big and scary should be really, really fun. So yeah, I have some ideas for the deck. Uh, we will definitely show off a couple of a list probably tonight or tomorrow, uh, that basically utilizes the Oni thread. Um, this is not one of these cards. Definitely get four copies of this card, like, uh, play your dailies because, like, this card does not really function as a one of in most situations. You kind of have to build a little bit around it, and I think that it's something that actually has, like, a relative amount of strength. In terms of overall power level, it is good, but it is very specific, and you do need to have like a really linear type of deck to make the best use of Jishu the Burning Brush. There are a lot of good two drops in red, and two drops in red have a lot of like good stats in general. This card does not provide card advantage. It will create some interesting board advantage scenarios, but it's almost strictly relegated to aggro, and it's also almost strictly relegated to aggro that specifically plays with Onis. And since it has some anti-synergies with like uh, the mid-range Onis and the late game Onis, like we might need even more Onis cards to really fill out a proper Oni deck. Uh, I, I think this card most strongly belongs in aggro decks with a few amount of Onis, and then like you can do some other interesting stuff along the lines. Obviously, it's very fun with Ejin's Workshop. That's definitely the card that it's strong that it's uh, most strongly supporting and bringing back into the meta. Uh, Ejin's Workshop has never been that playable a card before, but now that you have some Onis that will automatically have plus one weapons that uh, give them both overwhelm and double damage, uh, that helps a lot with the generally weaponless Oni, uh, which is kind of interesting that Oni don't have like a strong weapons theme. So I think that Jishu is overall a pretty good flavor win, like a really well-designed card, definitely like hits all of the right notes, fills the slot that is needed to be filled, but also I think that Oni are a pretty underdeveloped tribe, and like the amount of weapons that they have and how they access those weapons kind of makes me want to play Jishu in decks that don't run a lot of Oni, which is a little unfortunate since she's very clearly a somewhat Oni tribal card and benefits the best from specifically that exam that um that setup. But nonetheless, if you are playing Oni Patrol, Oni Samurai, and Oni Ronin all together, Jishu the Burning Brush is a great addition to your deck. Otherwise, it's gonna be a pretty tough one. You can at least run two of the three and then pick a couple of other one drops to best support this onslaught. But if you're not getting the onslaught, I would say don't bother with the card. Still, seems like a reasonably good power level card, very, very specific, but nonetheless, like, good at filling a meta. That's exactly what we want out of promo cards. We want promo cards to basically allow us to explore different decks without actually influencing the meta too hard in one way or the other. We want them to create a couple of new decks, but not actually, like, make it so that basically every deck is just running this one promo. So great design from Direwolf, really, really solid card, and should make uh, the next month pretty interesting. I also think it's just a very good choice for the first month of Dark Frontier when everyone is playing around with all of the different stuff. That seems like a really, really strong, strong choice. So yeah, overall seems pretty strong. Uh, people are mentioning Kemo. Yes, Kemo is very strong with Jishu. Uh, it is a little bit more late game than some of the other things that you can do with Jishu, but I think it's probably not too bad. Um, 
yeah, so that's basically it. That's my uh, impressions on Jishu. I hope you guys enjoyed. And if you have more notes, you can leave them in the comments down below. You can also like or subscribe. And if you want to see all of my videos, there's a bell icon that you can click that will allow you to get notifications. So thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you all next time to the Twitch folks. We're going to go back to some games. Cheers.